Hello, good evening. Can you hear me? Can you raise your hand? Okay, okay, good. Good, good evening, yeah. I'll give introduction myself. I'm Dr. Silal Nuntluanga, Assistant Administrator in Mizoram University. So sorry for a few delay. So we will be discussing about a topic on unlocking potentials of ICTs in uh, higher education. So I don't know what is your background. Some of you might be from ICT background and will be knowing a lot of things. So anyway, I hope that during discussion and interaction, you will be learn, learning something new <laughs> that will be helpful for <clears throat> and this ICT application in your uh, teaching learning process. Yeah, I'll go straight to my slide. I'll share my slide. Okay, can you see? Can you see my screen? <clears throat> yeah, I hope you can, all of you can see the screen. See, unlocking potential of ICT in higher education. I have put one more uh, sentence, practical oriented. I put this thing, uh, the reason is, nowadays we all know how to use Google search engines and other search engine. Everything's, the now internet is becoming uh, like an ocean of knowledge data. Anybody can search anything he want from the net. For example, if we know about something, on unlocking potential of ICT in higher education, just type it this as a search a keywords in Google page, then it, it will give you hundreds of papers or web pages related to this, this topic. In this way, anybody, any, any educated person can search by his own, her own over the internet. So I, we will not be touching all the theoretical, the concept part, but I want to focus on the practical oriented from my own experience. As I give myself as a, a introduction, as a system administrator, I'm looking after all the ICT activities in Mizoram universities. So during, during this COVID period also, we have learned so many things about uh, applicability of ICT in this higher education. So based on that, I'll try to uh, focus <clears throat> our topic on the practical aspect. But we cannot cover many things. I have uh, selected four four points, four areas, like the key areas of using ICT in teaching learning. So the first topic I have selected is an online data storage, an online interactive classes, learning management system (LMS), academic integrity. These four areas, so that I have selected for discussion for uh, today's uh, program. So if you read, you will be knowing very well about online st data storage. And you have experience, we have experienced online interactive classes. We also know how to use our LMS. We know about academic integrity, but let's go one by one. <clears throat> and the first I would like to discuss is online data storage. So many of you will be knowing the era of that of floppy disk, no? We started with floppy disk, then pen drive, hard drive, external hard disk. Nowadays, normally we are keeping our data on online storage. Nobody care about a pen drive anymore because pen drive, we can lose it, it, it can be damaged. So we lose the, the, the data. So now the best option to keep our digital data is online storage. So as a teacher, as a student, we have so many personal files. For example, if you're from a teaching profession, you will have your own video lectures. You will have uh, your study materials, teaching materials in PDF format, MS format. Okay, we have a lot of, uh, some may have a, uh, uh, terabytes of data, some may have a uh, 2GB, 3GB data that we need to keep in a safe place. At the same time, we require it should be accessible anytime, anywhere. If we keep 
our data and my personal laptop or my personal office computer without any internet access. Then I cannot access as and when it is required. So we always have to think about online storage that can be accessible anytime, anywhere. Wherever internet is available, my data should be readily available. So for that purpose, these are the, the three common <coughs> online storage solution. For documents, normally we put Google Drive. This is the most common one because uh, we can have Google account free of cost. So Google is doing a very good job for this whole humanity, I would say, particularly in education that I want to uh, discuss later. Again, Google education service. So Google Drive, OneDrive, OneDrive is uh, from Microsoft company. It is uh, the main challengers of this Google Drive. And Dropbox, personally, I prefer this Dropbox online storage, but it is a kind of uh, commercial. So it has a very good uh, security features, a lot of uh, options are there, but they have given a very limited storage space for uh, free users. But if we can afford for professional versions, a standard version, I personally prefer Dropbox. But in educational cycle, we normally use Google Drive. So Google Drive, we can have up to 15 GB storage. There we can keep, I just put a four documents. We can also put any kind of data format. A free account, previously it was 30 GB. Now the user across the world has increased significantly. So they have reduced the free account storage to 15 GB. And the basic account, 100 GB. For example, I keep on uh, uploading my document on my Google Drive associated with my Gmail account. I hope everybody understand this at uh, Google Drive because this is becoming a very normal thing. So once we are reaching the free account limit, 15 GB, then we can upgrade it to basic account, 100 GB, up to 100 GB at the cost of 130 rupees per month. So 100 GB will be good enough for majority of us for keeping our documents, all our research papers, our student submissions of uh, assignment, anything, 100 GB should be sufficient for normal users that by paying 130 rupees per month, we can have that much storage of online that can be accessible. It is supposed to be 99.99 uptime. So uh, we haven't uh, experienced till now, there is a downtime in a Google Drive. Huh? And if we want more storage, we can upgrade it to standard account, 200 GB. Likewise, up to one or two terabyte. Later, we'll discuss about enterprise solution in that we can have unlimited storage as well, as far as we can pay. So we can, uh, we can utilize their service online storage as per our requirement. And another thing, normally we keep our video lectures in a YouTube. YouTube is also <clears throat> associated a link with our Gmail account only. But here, normally we don't want to display our uh, class lectures, video lectures in the YouTube. In that case, while you publish, while we publish our YouTube video, we can give it option unlisted. That means anybody, uh, who don't have my my YouTube link, they will not be able to see my videos. If we publish as a public, then by using some search key, anybody can reach to my videos. But if we want to restrict the access to only the students, then my lecture video, I'll upload it in my YouTube channel. Then I make it as unlisted and I will share my YouTube video link only to the selected viewers. In that way, we can keep unlimited size of my lecture videos. So that is uh, the most common way of uh, keeping our uh, personal files, our research works, anything. Yeah. So let's move on to the next. <clears throat> and online interactive classes. 
Online instructive classes, we all have experienced during this COVID time. We abruptly migrated into online mode of learning. That time we were using Zoom. I don't know is it popular in your place, but here in Mizoram University, Zoom was the main rescuer for our student. By using Zoom software, Zoom platform, we were able to conduct our online classes so that the student did not miss or lost their academic year. With the help of this, we were able to conduct the regular classes in online mode. So this is a commercial one. Personally, I feel this is the best apps because it is lightweight. It does not require much uh, internet bandwidth. So we have been using regularly this Zoom. And another is Google Meet. This is the, most, the most common one, I think. But it's the free version has some limitations. It does not come with uh, recording. If we want to take attendance of the participant, we have to install some add-ons in the application. But this too, yeah, there are a lot of uh, other options. I am just mentioning the two, the two most uh, common one. So I'll focus on Google Education Service for Institutions. There is one, uh, there is my main point of discussing this too, because this Google Drive, Google Meet, we all know about it. But here I want to extend our discussion to Google Education Service for Institutions. So Google is giving this education service for all the recognized institutions. The first thing we need to do is we have to verify our institute as Google approved educational institute. Okay, one more thing I want to add is you may not be from uh, IT, uh, IT, uh, you know, I, 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 ICT personnel, maybe uh, teachers in uh, social science or humanities. But this thing you can share, you might already have in your institute. If you haven't got it, you can share this thing to your institute authority. So to try to get these services for your own institution that you will benefit it. Okay, see, the first thing we need to do is we must have our own website, domain name. For example, uh, the color choice is not good here. I have given mzu.edu.in. This is the official domain name of Mizoram University, mzu.edu.in. See, edu.in. This name itself says that we are educational institution in India. These two parts indicates that this website owner, this domain owner belongs to educational institution inside India. And this is our own choice. You can choose your own, depending on uh, your college name, your university name, wherever you're working. So this thing, you can apply it in, uh, in FlipNet India. It is a government of India organization. This thing, this type of domain name, Another one is uh, ac.in, okay, edu.in and ac.in are reserved for educational institution, mostly for uh, higher education. So no one else in other country can give this domain name. This is specifically reserved for uh, Indian institutions. So you can go to in FlipNet, if you, have, if you are a government uh, institution, you can apply it for your own institutional website domain name. They will verify it. After verification, you will get this domain name. Then you will create one website for your college using this domain name. Once your website is up and run, then you will approach Google, Google team, Google education team. 
their resellers, <clears throat> they have Indian partners. You can easily reach out to them. So they will help you to verify it by Google as educational institute. They may charge you uh, 5,000 uh, to 10,000, depending on the resellers. So once you are verified by the Google and approved as educational institute, then you are entitled to utilize Google Education's service. Mizoram University, we are also, we are also a Google approved educational institution. So because of that, we are getting a lot of uh, benefits in terms of their service. For example, uh, most email users are using Gmails, but the email address would be abc at the rate gmail.com, xyz at the rate of gmail.com. But once we are verified with a Google education service, we can have our own customized email name. For example, here I have given vc at the rate of mzu.edu.in. So because we are a Google uh, approved institution, we can have more than 10,000 Gmail accounts for our students and our employees. But that Gmail, that email account will be customized in the name of our university website name or domain name, I would say. So vc at the rate mzu.edu.in, register at the rate mzu.edu.in, controller of examination at the rate mzu.edu.in. In that way, we are also giving to all our students based on mzu.edu.in, but that is practically a Gmail account. They will log in into gmail.com. They will just type their account. It will function, it will work as a normal Gmail. The benefit is, the benefit is, it is like institutional emails. So this institutional email ID is very important, particularly for research scholars, you will be knowing. For example, if you want to register in a research gate, they will ask you to provide institutional email IDs. They will not accept yahoo.co.in, gmail.com, redivmail.com. Here is a generic email. So they will ask for your approval of identity in your institution. You have to provide, we have to provide institutional email ID. So if we have to buy from the some third party vendors, we have to pay a huge money to get 100 email account. But under this Google education service, we can have more than 10,000 users account. Another thing is Google Drive space. In the earlier, uh, the previous pages, I have shown that a normal Gmail account, we can have up to 15 GB storage in Google Drive. If it is not sufficient, then we can upgrade it to a basic account. We have, we have seen what is the cost. But if we have Google education service, they claim that the institute the institute will get unlimited Google Drive space. I haven't verified the the reseller will say that it is unlimited. Here in Mizoram University also, we have thousands of users. We don't have any restriction. In your normal Gmail account, you can see that if you go to your Google Drive space, it will show 5 GBs of 15 GB use, 10 GB of 15 GBs use. It will show how much storage you have consumed. But under education, Google education account, nothing will be shown like that. It will just show that how many storage you have been using. It will not show any limit. So right now, 
we are using a lot of terabytes under this service. Okay, that is a big, a very big beneficial benefits for us. So we don't have any restrictions or any student, any faculties. They are uploading as much as they need. So we are not putting any restrictions. So we are getting such unlimited. Yeah, I don't know whether yeah, one day we may experience, is it really unlimited or not? But so far, we don't face any problem in the storage space as the whole university. And another thing is, if you have this Google education service, one more thing, you cannot have this uh, Google education service uh, individual. It should be at institutional level. Your institution have to strive to get approved by Google as Education Institute. Once it is approved, then every individual will get this service. So Google Meet, the different is, I don't know, is there any latest uh, development? Google Meet with recording. Previously, if we need to have a recording in the Google Meet, I want to record my own uh, lectures using Google Meet. In that case, I have to do some sc uh, screen, uh, screen capturing. So I have to capture the whole screen. But Google Meet apps under Google Education Service will give you this recording facility even for attendance record. For example, if I'm using uh, Google Meet with my uh, MZU account right now, all the participant attendance will be recorded after my lectures, the video lecture recorded, attendance sheet in Excel format, it will be immediately sent it to my uh, Gmail account, my, my, yeah, that Gmail account. That is possible with this Google education. This is what my, my suggestion for your institute. If you already have, then it is fine. If you don't have these facilities, please advise your college authority and first try to get Indian educational website domain name and create a website using that domain name. After that, get approval from the Google. This Google approval process is for one time only. Once you are verified, then it will validate for indefinite time. Okay, there is, it is not required to revalidate every year. So it will validate for as long as you want to use their service. And you can create, you can provide your customized institutional email ID to your students and all the employees. And you can have this Google Drive, Google Meet with recording. Okay, that is the second, the second topic we have covered. Then uh, <clears throat> the third areas I like to focus is learning management system. Okay. So the COVID is over. In here in Mizoram also, we have revert back to offline mode, in-person classroom teaching. But even then, we should think about a blended mode of learning. In NEP 2020 also, they have suggested the blended mode of learning. Even they have mentioned that 25% of uh, curriculum should be delivered in online mode. Such thing as there for a higher education. So we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, rule out the online classes even after this COVID, post, yeah, even in this COVID, post COVID period. So we have to use our learning management system, even if we are able to run offline classes. <clears throat> Sorry. So the most common, again, is in Google Classroom. And another is Indian product, Teachmin and Moodle. 
So I have highlighted the Moodle, the last one, because I want to focus on this Moodle. This Moodle is uh, very popular. It has been in use almost 20 years back. Here is the name of the application, the learning, uh, learning management system, just like a Google Classroom, here is the name. It is a free and open source institutional level LMS. It is free and open source. We don't need to pay any single rupee for this software product. It can be managed at institutional level. I'll show you the, the real portal. It can be easily set up in Google Cloud Platform. It is very much suitable for blended mode of learning. <clears throat> free and open source means anybody can see its source code. That means they can modify the software. If I know how to modify or how to improve that software, I have the right, the privilege. I can see the source code, what make uh, that made the Moodle software. See, most of the commercial software, we cannot look into the source code. We cannot make any changes. We cannot improve. Only the company, the company developer can touch its source code. But in case of open source, like uh, Moodle, anybody, everybody has uh, access to the source code. That's why many institutions who have a good uh, IT persons they're using this Moodle and modify it and customize according to their needs without paying any money. It is in the internet. Anybody can download it and modify it and improve it as per its own requirement. <clears throat> I'll show you one uh, here. I don't know how many of you have seen this one. this Moodle application. <clears throat> if you already know about the Moodle, or no. Okay, they're using a different network here. Anyway, I'll skip this part. Okay, I cannot show the practical. The site is not opening because the network is different. And the third part, or the fourth part, I'd like to discuss about is academic integrity. Academic integrity, nowadays, we can easily access works of other people. For example, if I want to write a paper on any selected topic, I can easily browse it in the internet, I can go to any journal site, even I can get uh, any um, many thesis related to my papers in the e uh, short Ganga itself. Okay, all the Indian PhD, MPhils, uh, synopsis and dissertation thesis are uploaded in the short Ganga. That is a portal maintained by uh, in Flipnet India. Then I can copy and paste it, modify, uh, change the paraphrasing. So I can make use of other people's work. So it's not only related to the research finding, even the ideas can be stealed from others. So nowadays, the major problem, the major concern of our higher education is academic integrity. So UGCs and other uh, agencies are, are trying to curb this plagiarism. Okay, stealing somebody's ideas or somebody's uh, writings, uh, papers, 
that we call it plagiarism. But we cannot totally avoid copying some other works because all our research work are interrelated. So the only place where plagiarism come is, become relevant is if we use some other works without acknowledging the original researchers, without giving any cite, proper citations. So if we claim, we, if we simply put some ideas or some works of some other people without acknowledging it, it comes under a plagiarism. So that is a major issue nowadays. Previously, we cannot see some other thesis work. It is in the printed form only. Nowadays, as we have mentioned earlier, every, everything is available on online. So this become a major problem, major concern for the authority. And that's why UGC has uh, time and again issues notification. Every university must set up a committee to curb this plagiarism. Okay. So it is very difficult. Now we have a very common tools, popular tools, not common, a very popular tools under UGC. This Urkun Tentanitin. This Urkun is one software that check for uh, similarity. And another is Tanitin. In Mizoram University also, we are using these two tools. This Urkund, it is provided by InfibNet India. Okay, if you don't have uh, in your institution, you can approach uh, InfibNet India. If you're a government uh, a funded under uh, UGC, you will get uh, that account. And turn it in, previously, it is also provided by uh, InfibNet to the, the universities, but in a trial mode. Now they are not giving any <clears throat> a free service to Tarnatin. They have recognized or approved Urkun for checking plagiarism in the case of PhD thesis submissions. But in Mizoram University, we have to, uh, many researchers, they want to publish in journals in the foreign, foreign journals. In that case, the foreign journals generally use Tarnitin to check the similarity. So Tarnitin is always finding a higher rate, higher percentage of uh, similarity than Urkund. And that's why many journal has been turned down by this uh, reputed journals. That's why the university, our own university has purchased from its own fund, a university level account for this Tarnitin. So I don't know how many are using this Urkund Tarnitin and practically, at least you would be knowing the name. Yeah, I'll just show you. Uh, if you're new to this, okay. Okay, previously the name was Urku. Now they have renamed their software name to Original. Original. So this is their site. If you have a user account, then you will log in. We'll log into on the portal. I hope you can see on the screen.
Very strange. All the practical thing I'm planning to demonstrate, it does not work. And anyway, let's try this. Yeah, luckily we are able to log into this Tanatin. <clears throat> As I said earlier, this Tanatin is more reliable. They have a bigger or larger database for cross referencing. So what, how it works is, yeah, those who are already have this thing, uh, consider it as just a repetition. Uh, for those new, it, I hope it will be helpful. So this is the university account I have. So all our, we have given account to all our faculties. So if I want to check my thesis or my research paper, how many uh, similarities it contains. I will upload my papers. Uh, is there any paper here? Let us see. Oh. Paper here at least. Okay, let's see. Then I will upload. <clears throat> As you can see, some of my previous paper that I have tested for somebody's. Okay. So as you can see from the screen, while uh, while the, my present uh, paper is uploading and processing, the previous file I uh, uploaded, it found almost 45% uh, similarities. Here, now it has come up with the similarity percent. I just uploaded NEP equity and inclusion, this paper. It is in a PowerPoint format. And then it found that 17% similarities. It is very difficult to work that. This, this is a different uh, machine. Huh? Yeah. I don't know whether you can see. It will show here. <clears throat> In that paper, it has found 17% similarity. It will show the sources from where they have copied and paste. Okay. 5%, 5%, 2%, 5% it from this internet from this site. Five another five percent from this site. You can see here also two percent of similarity from Hindustan Times. In that way, it will show <clears throat> the sources he has taken. <clears throat> See, you may be asking how how the similarity is uh, calculated. 
for example, in every paper, there will be some articles like A and uh, many things that will be common for every papers. But in this uh, Tarnitin, one uh, advantage, uh, best, uh, one good option about this Tarnitin is we have the option to define what should be considered as similarity, one instance of similarity. I can set in the setting if, by comparison, if the system find 14 consecutive words, 14 similar consecutive words, it will be considered as one instance of similarity, depending on the institute regulation. In MZU, we have anti-plagiarism regulation in that it defines that one similarity will be considered when 14 consecutive words are similar, depending on your institute, if we, can, if we define five consecutive similar words as one instance of similarity, then certainly it will find, it will give more percentage of similarity. If we define the similarity as 20 consecutive similar words, only when it is the words are consecutive. Depending on the length of that con, uh, the consecutive words, the result can differ. And also we can define or uh, do the setting to exclude that the cited works, okay, the qua, qua, uh, words or sentence and the quoted, quotation marks that we can also exclude. In the paper, normally we put at the end of the paper, uh, referencing bibliography, we can also exclude such thing. So depending on our requirement, we can do the setting in the Tanitin software, but many things are lacking in case of Urkund. So in that way, yeah, in Mizoram, yeah, because I'm, I'm belonging to Mizoram University and we are working for this anti-plagiarism. I'm a member of that anti-plagiarism committee. So what we're doing is, before the, the research scholar submit his uh, his paper, his final PhD thesis, the supervisors will verify that it has 0% similarity in the core areas. We divided the thesis into core and non-core. Non-core means introduction, Literature review, reviews, where normally we put a lot of other people as well. We consider introduction, uh, those uh, literature reviews, those part in non-core. In that portion, we can tolerate, we can accept up to 10% similarity. But the core component, like uh, research findings, and data, uh, suggestions and report, that should be the exclusive work of the researchers in that core portion, there should not be any similarity. The Tarnitin software should give 0% similarity. Only then the exam department will accept for further processing, for further examination. There is how we are trying to maintain academic integrity in our university. It is not only our own university, it is as per the mandate of UGC. So I hope that where you have learned where you did your research, the same rules will be followed. Okay. So nowadays, you can purchase as in the institutional level a Tarnitin account. There are so many uh, online portals where you can check similarities, but it is a free, a free tools, so they don't have that much uh, database. Okay. The Tarnitin is most reliable, we consider most reliable, and it gives a maximum result always. The reason is they have a very, very huge database for referencing, for cross-checking. The number of users increase, then their, their database also increase. For example, I uploaded my research works. If I let my paperwork remain there in the database of Tarnitin, then when somebody copied some text from my papers, then it will show you have taken this from the papers of Mr. ABC. Okay. If I don't want to keep, if I don't want to keep my paper in the Tarnitin database, then somebody copied, 
then it will not find any similarity because there is nothing to cross check against. So many people want to keep their papers on the Tarnatin database. In that way, the database itself is growing. It become larger and larger. That's why it is giving a more and more higher rates of similarity. So that is how things work, okay? So, yeah, let's go back to the... <clears throat> Unfortunately, I don't know what's wrong with that. Urkun. Urkun is the old system, that's why. Uh, maybe I might have changed my password. So the last, uh, the last topic I want to discuss about is academic. Yeah, I have, we have covered, uh, we have four, four areas. So online data storage, the first thing, and online interactive classes, learning management system, academic integrity. These are the four key areas that are playing a very vital, uh, important uh, parts in this ICT learning teaching process. Okay, we can add many more things like a smart classroom nowadays, even in our own university, we're introducing interactive whiteboard for every department. So nowadays on a whiteboard, blackboard, is not sufficient to give a clear understanding of the subject, particularly for science subjects. So we always need to get the help from this uh, dig digital tools. That's why we are also introducing a digital classroom. So that thing I will not uh, touch upon. The last point I would like to discuss is uh, this academic. <clears throat> it is a little bit different from the previous four topics. This is the last thing, uh, NEP. It is included in uh, National Education Policy 2020, Academic Bank of Credits. We call it ABC. It is a new concept. Many universities, yeah, they are also uh, at the initial stage of implementation. If you go to this Academic Bank of Credit site that I'll go to show, only few universities are onboarded. Some are also at a very, very initial stage. So the concept is, the student, nowadays uh, students mark sheet. Previously, I'll start from that. Previously, we used to give student mark sheet, their certificate in the printed format. But now the UGC, this uh, DIT, NAD, they have introduced NAD system, National Academic Depository. So all the universities, even uh, Board of School Education, like CBSC, Mizoram uh, Board of School Education, and their board exam, mark sheet and certificate are supposed to be uploaded in National Academic Depository, NAD, we call it. So the student, it is directly uploaded by the institution. It is considered as authentic. So when the CBSC publish their result, they simply say that download your certificate and mark sheet from your digital locker, because NAD is linked with digital locker. So all the Indian citizen who have Aadhaar card, Aadhaar number, they can create digital locker. Digital card locker is the very I thing, the, the very first uh, item we discuss. It is only an online data storage. The digital locker, it is Indian government, uh, our government uh, uh, initiative. All the Aadhaar card holder can have online data storage of 1 GB, no, 2 GB or 1 GB. 2 GB, I think. If I'm wrong, you can correct me. 2 GB data storage online. So it is uh, different from uh, this uh, commercial. It is very much secure compared to others. Okay, we can access only to our Aadhaar card. So if I create digital locker account by using my Aadhaar number, I can download my class 10 certificate, my driving license, 
my guess this consumer lg uh, lpg subscription my car my vehicle registration everything is already available in my digital locker because nowadays vehicle registration is done through online mode so automatically if you belongs to assam or nagaland wherever you are a transport department will link with the vahan and those thing no and i see it was developed by the software they are using software developed by nic so whatever document issued by the state government that links with the central government my data their data will be uploaded automatically into my digital locker for example today i got my driving license my driving license was processed and issued through this vahan system then automatically my driving license copy certificate is uploaded into my digital locker today i may not have open or create my digital locker but after one month i create my digital locker it is already there because once we have digital now aadhar card my digital locker already set up even if i use whether i use it or not it doesn't matter my space is already created there so the same way in the future all the central universities state institute colleges affiliated to government they are supposed to link their exam exam matters with this nad for example again let's take in in the case of mizoram university we declare ba undergraduate result then instead of giving the hard copy the printed mark sheet or certificate we will upload their electronic format of their mark sheet and certificate in nad then the student will able to download by using his digital locker account it is like a google drive no <clears throat> it is online storage the same way we share our document in the google drive by giving a link when the student applied for admission for example he is applying for admission in university his class 10 Uh, his graduation mark sheets are in his digital locker then he can simply give the link of that document then the university will download or verify through that link so that way the student don't need to carry his uh printed copy of a educational certificate so anytime anywhere for example uh, i want to apply admission then i don't need to upload my scan copy of document i will simply share my nad id national academic deposit id i will simply mention and give a link then the institute will easily verify it there is the concept of nad now on top of that nad this nep have introduced uh, academic bank of credits here the concept will be same the student mark everything will be stored in nad then their credits under a b c the student can join multiple courses even a single course multiple institution for example one student got admission in mizoram university say uh, mcom in mcom there may be 20 credits for example then 50% of the total credits he has to learn in his parent uh, institute where he got admission the remaining 50% he is allowed to take it from to learn from other institute which is affiliated or onboarded on the abc in online mode for example i do i am doing a mcom in mizoram university i will do 50% of my credits 
and the remaining I may join Delhi University, JNU, Assam University, Gauti University. In that way, they have opened up that their learning part. So we, the student need not be confined into a particular place or a particular institute. So all these are made possible through this ICT. See the concept, no one will doubt that it is good. Okay, the student can learn in its own pace. It can choose, it can open many papers from uh, where he consider is the best institute. But that thing can be realized, materialized only through ICT. Yeah? For example, uh, yeah, last part I'll, I want to show. Mm. I think most of you will be knowing this uh, digital locker. Yeah, I already have my account created. Uh, I don't need to memorize uh, uh, that number. I can simply type nine eight. I'll type my register mobile number. Uh, I receive an OTP. Yeah, this is my DigiLocker digi account. As you can see, I, I explain, no? Aadhaar card, COVID driving license, COVID vaccine certificate. I did not upload this thing. No? It was done from government side. We do COVID vaccine. We took a COVID vaccine. Then certificate is readily available in my uh, digital locker. Registration vehicles, LPG, many more. The institution where I learn, where I studied, if they uh, link with this uh, DigiLocker, NAD, then all my educational uh, certificate will be available here. Myself need not to update, upload it. Then drive, I can upload my own documents, okay? So if it is not issued by the government, then I can also upload my own. Here also I have uploaded a few documents, signed documents, okay? So if we have, it's just like a Google Drive, and one thing I want to show is that ABC part, ABC, that Academic Bank of Credit, how it work is, My account, you can see Academic Bank of Credit. As a student, is same as my the same way I log into my Digi Locker. Okay, there should be more. Yeah, again, OTP, I receive it in my mobile phone. Yeah, this is my ABC digital locker. So you can see here, my ABC ID is this. So here, 
Because Mizoram University, it is the initial stage of implementing ABC, and we already passed out uh, long before. So my data, my credits are not showing anything. Here it can, it is showing here, if you can read. Please provide your ABC IDT, ID to Academic Institute to reflect your credits here. For example, when, uh, when I joined, an institution belonging, uh, affiliated to ABC, then all my exam results, first semester results, second semester results, all my credit will be displayed here. At the same time, I can join another university, another institute. In that also, they will give, they will link my exam credits into this same account. I'll be able to see all the credits I earn from the friend institute. Even if it is from a single, then it will be showing. If I join multiple institutes at, at the same time, it will be shown because all will be linked. All will be linked to my ABC ID. So the final pre result preparation, or if I want to join some other institute, after completing second years or third years, then if I provide my ABC ID, then that institute will view and access my academic credits record. So no need to provide the mark sheets. Okay, this is the plan. Is it a very related to NAD concept itself? Oh, what time now? It is four. Okay, I think uh, we have uh, not much time. I'm also not good in explaining things. <laughs> I'm not from a teacher. <clears throat> yeah, is there any points to discuss? Uh, okay. Okay, we can we can conclude. Okay, I hope uh, you got something. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Okay, you can you can pursue. Yeah, as I, as we said uh, in the beginning, no, everything is available in the internet. The only thing is how to organize, how to filter what is important and what is relevant for us. That is the main the main challenge nowadays. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all, all of you.